So today we'll be going over the area moment of inertia, and this is commonly used in your strengths of material course, um, which basically involves solving for the stresses in certain beams that um, deflect. So when you have a cross-sectional area, the area actually, the cross-sectional area of the beam structure contributes to the strength of the structure depending on the cross-sectional area it may be more rigid and therefore is going to be less stress developed within the material and therefore it will be able to um, take more external loads and so so let's say we have a beam of a rectangular beam of this cross section and we have its centroid he located here now we have the area moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis which we'll call it ix and we also have the moment the area moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis which is i y now depending which orientation the beam it is um, and if there was an uh, external um, bending moment applied to the beam itself, you would either use the area moment of inertia about the x-axis or the y-axis to solve for the stress that would be developed within the material itself. Now, when it comes to the stresses and designing the beams accordingly, um, this would be in the next course known as the strengths of materials, but for now we'll just stick to solving for the area moment of inertia for now. Now the equations are for the area moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to the integral of y squared dA and the area moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to the integral of x squared dA. Now, the, now this is all uh, with respect to the centroid of the area so no matter what geometry whether it's a square a rectangle or other geometries is always going to be with respect to the centroid of it now i won't be going over the proof of actually solving for these area moments of inertia for simple geometries but there's equations that you could memorize when it comes to specific geometries so for these two um, common geometries or areas we have the rectangular area the area moment of inertia um, about the x or y axis is this equation 112 the base times the height cubed the base would be this base and the height would be the height of that rectangle as well as about the y 112 height times base cubed now is if you could already tell the units here is going to going to be in um in um, to the fourth power so if it's a area with respect to meters is going to be meters to the fourth power um, and for the circular area about the x or the y axis is one fourth pi times the radius to the fourth and so these are the common um, formulas that you could memorize for these area moments of inertia when it comes to solving depending on the geometry so let's go ahead and do an example so for this example, we have the problem statement, which is determine y bar, which locates the centroidal axis x prime for the cross sectional area of the T beam, and then find the moment of inertia about the x prime axis. So here we have the a T beam with its appropriate dimensions of 300 millimeters, 50, 250, and 50. Now, when it comes to solving about the for the area moment of inertia, we always need to find first its centroid because we always solve for the moment of inertia about the centroid of a cross-sectional area. Now, in this case, we need to solve first for um, y bar. And the previous video, um, we have the equation to solve for the centroid, which is the sum of the, the y bar i, a i, divided by a sum of all the cross-sectional area. So these is the sum of all the, the cross-sectional areas since we see that this T-beam is composed of actual um, simpler geometry. We have two rectangles here basically and we solve for the centroid with respect to the y-axis here. So let's go ahead and do that. So first step, split up this geometry into its simpler components. So we have rectangle number one here and rectangle number two. Now let's go ahead and solve for the, the centroid. So for the first area, we have this rectangle here. We have the the length being, let's say, 250 millimeters, the width being 50 millimeters. So we have 250 times 50, which gives us the area of this um 
this geometry of this rectangle. Now the y bar for this one, the centroid for this rectangle here is actually would be, remember, keep in mind we're doing it with respect to the bottom portion of the T beam. So this y bar for this one for number one would actually be, since it's a rectangle, we know it'll be half half of 250, so 125 millimeters is the centroid of this rectangle with respect to the bottom portion of the T-beam. And we multiply that by the area. Now for area number two here, we have the, the length being 300 millimeters with 50 millimeters, so the area is 300 times 50. Now the centroid of this rectangle is located here, um, which is half of 50, right? So it'll be 25 millimeters here and another 25 millimeters because the width here is 50. But we need to take the centroid, the, the distance from the bottom portion of the T-beam all the way up to the centroid. So that's going to be 250 millimeters plus 25. So it gives us 275 millimeters times the area here. All that divided by the the sum of the cross-sectional areas of both of these rectangles. And so we get the centroid Y bar being equal to, we get 206.82 millimeters where the centroid is located from the bottom of this T-beam. So this is Y bar here. So now to solve for the area moment of inertia about the X prime axis in this case, since we're calling it X prime. Now, um, Going back to the previous slide here, we had the equations for a simpler geometry, right, for the moment of inertia, the area moment of inertia um, for a rectangle as well as circle, but how about for a geometry for a T-beam? Now this is where very similarly, such as finding the centroid of composite areas, um, we basically have to solve for the moment, uh, the area moment of inertia of each simple geometry, and then add them up to get the the actual area moment of inertia for the entire structure itself, for the entire T beam. But this is where the parallel parallel axis theorem is actually utilized for that, which basically is the summation of the area moment of inertia about the centroid of a specific uh, simpler geometry, in this case, it'll be um, number one, number two, cross-sectional areas, plus the area of whichever one we're solving for. So let's say it's um, um, one. So we find the area moment of inertia for one about its centroid, right? Its own respective area centroid. And then we get the cross-sectional area of that one. Um, times the perpendicular distance from its centroid to the centroid of that T-beam. This will be the perpendicular distance here. So this is what the parallel axis theorem is. Um, if you have a more complicated geometry and you're trying to solve the area moment of inertia for this complicated geometry, you can actually split up the geometries, solve for each area moment of inertia, but you have to add the area of it times that perpendicular distance from the centroid of that simpler geometry to the centroid of the um, entire structure. In this case, we have a, a T-beam with comp more complicated geometry. Um, and that's what the parallel axis theorem is. So let's go ahead and solve for it to make it clear. So let's go ahead and start with geometry number one, that rectangle. So the area moment of inertia of a rectangle we know is 1 12th base times height cubed, right? So the base of that rectangle is 50 millimeters and the height is 250 millimeters and it's going to be cubed. The height is cubed. Then we have to add it of the, the cross-sectional area of that rectangle, which is 250 millimeters times 50 millimeters. And then we get the distance from its centroid to the centroid of the T-beam itself, that squared. So let's go up here a bit so we can see it more clearly. So what is the distance between this centroid of the rectangle to the centroid of the T-beam itself? Well, we know that 
um, the centroid of the T-beam is located 206.82 millimeters from the bottom, and we know that the centroid of this rectangle is located 125 millimeters from the bottom. So the distance here is just a subtraction of 206.82, 206.82, take away 125 millimeters to get that distance and then we square it so that's solving for one of the simpler geometries now we repeat this for the other geometries so let's go back here so then we go ahead and add plus we do the same thing for the second geometry so for the second rectangle, we have the area moment of inertia for that rectangle, which is 112. The base is 300 millimeters. Just remember to keep that same convention where the base is this portion and the height is this portion of that rectangle. Um, don't confuse the two. Don't mix them up because you will get incorrect answers. Just keep that in mind. So 300 millimeters is the base of that rectangle. 50 millimeters is the height and the height is cubed plus the cross-sectional area, which is 300 millimeters times 50 millimeters. Now we're supposed to find the perpendicular distance from the centroid of that rectangle to the centroid of the T-beam. So from this centroid going down to that axis here, this is the perpendicular distance for area two here. So in this case, we know the the height or the length from the centroid to the bottom of this rectangle. So it's 250 plus 25 is 275 millimeters minus 206.82 millimeters to find this length here. And that distance is squared. So now you go ahead and multiply everything and then add it. And then we finally saw for the area moment of inertia of this T-beam. So we finally get 221,638,258 millimeters to the fourth power. Now it's a pretty big number, but of course we're dealing with millimeters here to the fourth. So here is your area moment of inertia for this T-beam. So the area moment of inertia for a simple geometry rectangle or circle is just a simple equation that we went over. Now when it comes to um, dealing with more complicated geometry such as a I-beam or in this case a T-beam, you're going to need to utilize this parallel axis theorem to solve for that more complicated geometry based off the simpler geometries which is just an addition of the respective area moment of inertia for each um, rectangle that, that's composed of plus that cross-sectional area times the um, perpendicular distance of the centroid of one specific area to the centroid of the more complicated geometry squared. Um, kind of similar to doing the finding the centroid of um, composite areas. Now in this case we're doing the parallel axis theorem. And this is how you solve for the area moment of inertia. Now you'll get a better understanding of what kind of um, applications we use this for um, once you start doing your strengths of materials course. But essentially, the, the, the higher the area moment of inertia, the more rigid the structure is going to be, the stronger, the more um, force it will be able to handle and so forth.